Hey, what's up, guys? We're also back here, and today we're gonna be playing some Murloc Shaman. This is a deck I've honestly never. I've never been able to get my hands. Or, like, I've never gotten any Murloc deck to start working in Hearthstone. From beta all the way up to now, I think my win rate on most Murloc decks is like sub. 50% like probably between 40 and 50% and honestly like my lose rate against the deck is <laughs> or like my win rate against the deck is like 20-30% like I I don't know why I can't beat these fucking fish and I can't play these fucking fish it's just not my style of deck if I'm being honest but right now I've been seeing a lot more of this deck recently on ladder uh, I've, I've been grinding some some ladder off recording, um, practicing for a deck tech that is coming up, uh, and also trying to get some footage. So I now have, I think, three hours of the deck that I'm working on, or I'm trying to build my deck tech on. If I'm honest, the best way to improve the deck, by the way, is just play it. Um, you know, I think I think yesterday I logged like 40 plus games on the deck. No, not quite. 30. 20 20 plus games on the deck but then i'd i'd go back and i would look at my place see if that, there was anything i could improve on um afterwards so it does take a lot longer than you'd think when you're trying to like get better but that's a story for the deck tech when that inevitably comes out eventually comes out it probably won't if i'm being honest i'm i've been trying to get deck techs out for like three months now and then every single time like I have a Shadow Walk Shaman one that's like three quarters of the way done. I just have to record the gameplay and I'm just like, the script is shit. I don't like it anymore. I want to redo it. So then it got turfed to the side, started working on something else. Did not like that when it got close to the end, threw it away, started working on something else. So, hey, maybe this one will actually come out the way I like it or I can finish it all the way and then realize I don't like it. And then, yeah, anyways, whatever. With that being said, let's queue up the first game of these fish and let's see how it works. Alright guys, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys all in the first game. Alright, first matchup is against a priest. I'm assuming it's a big priest. Toxfin is an auto keep. Uh, I think this whole hand's an auto keep. The reason why Toxfin is an auto keep is I'm assuming it's big priest. And against big priest, Firemancer, Flurg plus Toxfin is like your best friend. So... For that reason, I think it has to be an auto-keep. Um, it's interesting to me that this list doesn't run any copy. Okay, it's aggro. In which case, this is still pretty solid. It allows like this thing to trade into basically anything he can have. This is probably my play next turn. But at the same time, I do want to guarantee... I want to try to guarantee get value out of this. I've actually never played aggro into this deck. I don't think I ever have. So this is going to be interesting. Whenever you play a Murloc, this is not play right. Yeah, no, it's not. I think I want to go with this here. No, this is better. Yeah, okay, so now depending on what he plays, I can do this, give this poisonous trade into whatever he plays. Be ahead on board, have a card draw engine on the battlefield. But yeah, now if he just plays one, of, like he's gonna probably just put a three-two here, right? Unless he's not holding another shadow spell, or not. Interesting. Interesting. That's not what I was expecting. Okay, that's fine. I, I, that's genuinely not what I was expecting to happen there. So, I'll take it. Uh, there you, there you always wait ten turn in case you hit tiny fin, in which case you get a free reroll, which is pretty nice. And obviously, Tiny Fin's actually huge in this deck because it triggers this for free, triggers this for free. It's it's all just really fucking good. I hope he doesn't have another Shadow Spell. Okay, sick. I get so much value here. A oh, one drop would be perfect. Okay. Uh, do I want... I think I would rather do this one first. Okay, that's really good. Do that. I'm gonna take this. All right, this is good. It should ideally slow him down a little bit. Uh, he's played two out of six of the shadow spells in that deck, so this might not have 
it might not be easy for him to trigger this that many more times. That's fine, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. So this is the only card here that can be a shadow spell. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what's my best way to do more damage, right? This, 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 oh, I can't actually do all that. It'd be this, this, this is not that much. It's not like what I'm saying is it's not lethal. Uh, actually, hold up. I think it is the right play though. Uh, I want to play this for sure. I think this into this is the right call. It removes a lot of the burst he has, right? Because now he has this. We know that this is a 3 2, this is a 1 1. Hero power, this can no longer attack me. So I think, like, I'm super far ahead right now. I mean, not, and I have lethal on board, so. And I mean, I have old eye, which is just. Yeah, all right, he's dead. Yeah, I think that play early game with give this poisonous to trade into this was like, or the, the trade into 3 3, the first 3 3, was like actually super, super key to winning that game. Like, it was, it was actually really good. Oh, I can see how this deck could actually be really good. The, um, Underbelly Angler, I think is his name. The 2 3 that gives you a Marlock every time you play a Marlock is actually an insane card. That's so much card advantage for a 2 drop. It's insane. Anyways, though, uh, let's queue up the next one. All right. Sorry, I was looking at my phone. That queue took like two minutes. Uh, I'm going to keep. I don't think you can keep Old Eye. I'm trying to think if Old Eye is worth keeping or not, and it is your main finisher in this deck, but I think overall I'm better off mulling it and getting out the best card. It's not what I want to see. The best card in this deck is just Clownfish. That card is actually ridiculously strong. That one's also really good, but it's no Clownfish. Clownfish just allows you to cycle through your deck so fast. I think it was in yesterday's video, right? Where... Or, when the fuck was it? I'm trying to remember when it was, but I was playing against a guy who went turn two clownfish, turn three this, turn four clownfish this. Like, it was absurd. Like, his curve was insane. And yeah, like, this deck just. It revolves really around clownfish, angler, old eye, and ravenger. They're all really, really good cards. And you have so many good ones also in the early game, like Amalgam, uh, Amalgam Toxfin, Blurg, Angler as well. Like, all these cards are just really, really good, like, no matter what stage of the game you are. The problem is that I'm having right now is I don't really want to hit him anymore. Because I don't want to get him into Molten Giant range. I have a feeling he's a Molten Giant deck, right? He's, I mean, he's Warlock. He's even, there's like a 99% chance he has Molten Giants in his deck. And I don't want to get him into Molten Giant Rangers. I don't want to just risk the Molten Giant, Mountain Giant, Molten Giant, Sunfear Protector. I have 288 Taunts and I don't have Flurg plus Toxin and I have to deal with it, right? I mean, that's why you do have this, which can help with drawing all that stuff. But I think I'm fine. I can put him down to 19 here. Even if he taps, he can't slam Molten this turn. I'm trying to think for like these, when would be the best time. But if he just has one big top, I meaning I do have Toxin now, which makes me feel a little bit safer. But I do kind of wish I hit a Murloc I could have played. Uh, Clownfish would have been the best. Clownfish would have been the best top deck no matter what, basically, though. It's typically one of the better ones in the deck, just because... Again, I'm holding this, so it's, like, really, really good. Every fin is also a very interesting draw uh, for later on. So if I do have a full board, right, any fin is, like... 
14 damage if I have a full board of Murlocs. Kind of ridiculous. If I have a full board, it's 14 damage either way, but... Like, for 3 mana, right, if I had a board full of Murlocs like this, and everything is fucking plus 4, plus 4. That's like 28 damage just by that. It's insane. I think this is the single deck that has the most amount of burst potential currently in the game. That's not a combo deck, right? Obviously, Pillager... I played a game of Pillager not so long ago that I dealt... My opponent had 55 armor as a Druid and 40 health was a Vrenathal and I overkilled him by 25. Like, I, to be fair, I played four Pillagers after Shadow Stepping a... Um, mailbox Dancer. My opponent left. But yeah, after Shadow Stepping a Mailbox Dancer twice and then playing um, like Pillager Pillager on him then doing potion bouncing everything to my hand i had two mana left or yeah two mana left i killed off my mailbox sensor with a backstab played another one played two more and then did two more of the pillagers and i just like overkilled them by 25 and he was at like 90 somewhat health it was absurd like that deck can that deck can that deck is good like i think pillager rogue might be the best combo deck in the game right now that or, or, no second best after quest mage but we're doing good with Murloc Shaman. Uh, might be because we're using the Murloc Portrait, but okay. Uh, let's keep the next game because, I mean, there's still plenty of time left. All right, guys. So, yeah, I'll see you guys all there. All right, another priest. I'm going with it is uh, big. Oh, this hand is disgusting. I'm going to keep this whole hand. I have arguably one of the best turn ones in this deck. The only thing that could arguably be better is like two tiny fins. Yeah, it's it's big. Uh, I'm gonna do this play. Start attempting to generate mass value into this next turn, ideally with two more Murlocs on the battlefield. I mean, I have one more one drop here. I have another try to one drop, and I have what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven one drops. I would just slam here. Beautiful. Well, that one's kind of useless. What's an interesting one, but it's also kind of useless. It's just a two mana three two. Um, as while I okay. So I can no longer just slam things for the sake of slamming things. Which is interesting. I have the option to go Murloc, Murloc here. And then go No Fin uh, next turn. Which, I mean, that pushes a lot of damage. But it does leave this guy in range of tenants number two. Right, that one was discovered. So, if that was what he discovered, that's telling me that he kind of doesn't have anything to kill this right now. That's what I'm thinking, right? But at the same time, I mean, that's a lot of damage. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Goes him down to 20. Next turn, he has to try to do something to discount Shadow Essence. But if I do this, that would be 4, 5, 6... Plus, next turn, that'd be 10. <sighs> Fuck it, if he has the second penance, he has the second penance. I think this is correct. Right, because he's at 24 now, and then this is going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, it doesn't actually quite kill him. Okay, right here. That was worst case scenario, basically. I hate life. That was actually just really fucking unlucky. The fact that it hit the one one and then hit my biggest minion when there was two other one ones on the battlefield. If it hit this, we were like super far ahead. And the fact that it missed is like really, really bad for us. I slammed this this turn. Ideally, ideally finding Firemancer Flurry because I know that next one he wants to slam Shadow Essence, right? So if I could do this and then I could find an like Firemancer Flurry, I'm just absurdly ahead. Oh well, I don't even need to try and find it. Let's go, Pog Champ. That's five. 
I should have copied something else. Oh, no. Okay. Clownfish was what I was hoping for. So the thing, the reason I'm, I want to do this and commit as hard to the board as possible is I wanted to slam a Shadow Essence and bank on the fact that... Please hit blood. Beautiful. Okay, I win the game. I have lethal now on board. I was banking on the fact that uh, he would just Shadow Essence here and assume it was all good. And now I just have way over lethal by extending to the board. Also, that deck plays no more board wipes besides Hysteria and nothing on my board... Nothing on my board Hysteria had wiped. So, like, I felt super, super safe extending here. And I knew that I had the answer to that in hand. The only thing that kind of blew me out was Neptalon, but even then, I'm pretty sure I was able to outscale it uh, with what I had on board. Also, if you just Neptalon, it was double uh, no fin, and I think it was lethal. That was 12. Yeah, that would have been lethal. Even though he killed my big guys. It would have been like 20, I think. Yeah, it would have been like 20 damage or so. No more than that, like 21 or 22. Uh, that's that's rough estimations off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it was still lethal. Um. Anyways, though, we're at the we're at a good rank, but uh, we're gonna continue going. Hopefully, get some more dubs. All right, guys. Yeah. With that being said, I'll see you guys all there. All right, Hunter. I'm assuming it's Quest. It's either Quest or Beast. We're faster than Beast, and I think we can go underneath Quest. I don't really want to keep Toxin in this matchup. I do want to keep these two though, just because it's a decent curve. Um, him keeping this makes me think it's quest. This is a little bit better here. If this... Oh, it's beast. Okay. So now it's beast. This is actually the worst. The, the, a, le a less good minion to start the game off. That deck does play a lot of things that can just now kill this. Yeah. If it was quest, it would have forced coin, and I was extremely okay with forcing coin out of his hand. Also, that's also really good because I, I would rather lose this guy every single time over losing Angler. Uh, I want him to try and get him to play something that I could then kill with Angler. Uh, Tiny Fin would... Okay. Let's just say Tiny Fin is the best draw on my deck. But... Protect this at all costs. It's like fucking playing Protect the President or whatever, you know? I have to hope he doesn't have Overwhelm number two. I think that's the only piece of removal that deck actually plays is Overwhelm. Okay, that's fine. We're way... Like, we can now outvalue him. We can test the Buzzard value in Angler value, and I think Angler is just strictly better. I should have actually started with this. That was kind of my bad. Okay, that's... That's a phenomenal draw, actually, or like a phenomenal RNG. I want to hit a one drop. That's not a one drop. That's a really good one as well. Like both of these are really solid. I do like giving both of these guys poisonous. Again, this deck, I'm not really expecting his minions to be that big of a problem. The fact he drew both buzzards in the top nine cards of his deck is really good for him, but at the same time, the deck doesn't really play any charge or anything like that, so we're basically fine doing this. I think I try to overcommit to the board to try and get every fin off. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to see that. That was like the worst card for me to see here. That's a really good see, though. All the minions that can go face are going face. That, that. Trade with the smaller one, even though both overwhelms are gone, both starving buzzers are gone. Like he's straight up out of value and we have a board that's lethal. So yeah, all right. I didn't think there was a way he could come back. Like unleash the hounds, that deck doesn't really play that anymore, but that kills two things, uses up most of his mana. So he's like just super far behind. Uh, I feel like we've been getting exceptionally lucky draws if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, unless, unless this deck is really that powerful, I feel like we've been getting really good matchups and really, really good draws. Um, like, we could have lost a really easy lead to that Priest if they would have went turn 3 Shadow Essence, but luckily they didn't. 
so anyways uh let's uh let's get the next one right guys yeah i'll see you there all right we're against mage mage is also gonna be a harder matchup this on three is actually in or this on two into this on three is like almost perfect curve oh my god this curve is actually nuts if he goes quest on one it has to be mummy on one or mermy the fact that this is called the mermy makes me kind of happy not gonna lie um yeah it's just this on one i think the other option is this this forces what does this force it forced first flame second flame next turn where i can potentially just steal the game this on one into this on two though is like insane because then i can do this on this this on three i feel like i have to go for the greedy play though like i don't feel like i can ever give him a free turn to just try to like set up shit. so if i like doing this means he doesn't have a free turn gives me one more draw to one drop plus this to get another one drop it slows this down by a little bit but i think that's fine he also had to have the first flame second flame so if he didn't he had lost the game off this one drop i think this had to be the right play though one drop or a second angler are the best draws in my deck like i don't ever want to give him a free turn to try and set up ice block right i wanted to be him to like set it up out of desperation and then this way like it it staggers that deck so much if if you ever take it to like that's the big counter to quest mage at least i found in my games is you're if this is the, oh i thought this was okay well that's fine it's still a bigger body than this um if you ever just give them a turn where you don't really have anything to answer your board or whatever that's when it gets like really really sketchy uh does these i think these stack i get punished now because i want to answer this with this but yeah like see like no matter what here he got free turn to set up which is really really bad for me but what can you do uh, i want to do this trade no i think i'm better off just going face i don't want to play this because i want to do this this i'm pretty sure they stack which means i'll have two mana left over to play one murloc that costs two less and play this uh and play another thing so uh, that's not the card i wanted to see if i would have traded in here it would have been a little bit less bad but that's definitely not the card i want to see that's an interesting one that's an interesting one this has to be the play though Again, no breaks. Do this. This is what, 10, 13? 13, he has to be aware of every fin is in my deck. He has to be aware that no fin is in my deck, so. Like, he, he just has to be aware, basically, of everything. At first, an evocation here. If he misses on a board wipe or if he just hits, like, bad spells, he's, like, in a really, really bad spot. I need to hope he misses on those things right like that that can just blow me out if i'm being honest um right like a potion of whatever that into your next fire spell costs two less into flame strike like there's so many bad possibilities it sucks that he's actually just hitting a whole bunch of gas like a free six six a way to kill my guy like uh that's just really unfortunate that Eight cards, double, first flame, evocation, Varden. He basically just hit the nuts, so what can you do? Yeah, with this, he had lost the game last turn. If he didn't hit removal into cycle into removal. Oh, that's fucked. That has this. Oh my god, that's so bad for me. 
it was like the worst card for me to see because now he can that means this is a second flame no what the fuck it's, oh no it's evocation biscuit the other one oh, i'm fine if you want to give me more cards you don't typically want to be giving the aggro deck more cards at least that's what I found in my uh, very small time of playing this game. Hopefully not removal. He's dead if that's not removal, to be fair, though. Okay, I'm pretty sure he dies here. These are really fucking awful, huh? Lethal. See, that's what I'm saying, right? Even though he had everything, because I never let up the pressure, it never gave him a clean turn to just slam ice block and play something else, right? He was always forced to try and find an answer, right? Because if he just slammed ice block there, he just delayed the inevitable, right? I still had a board. He still was far away from quest. He he had to do something to try and deal with my board. And he just was never able to get there because I was just super like always on the gas going and hitting him, right? That's why the coin turn one was really, really good. If I was in a, if I was against another aggro deck, I would have 100% just slammed the one one there. Because I could have done slammed the one one into the clownfish, into the other thing that makes my Murlocs cost one less, into the um, draw, and the right net right. Then I then I again have a full grip of hand, but I set up a huge board on turn three. But the thing is, he could have took his turn three to go ice block, and I still was not pushing lethal yet. So that's why I think it's like super, super important to always be on the aggressive in that matchup. No matter what deck you are, if you're playing Shadowwalk Shaman, if you're playing Odd Warrior, if whatever you're playing, always be on the aggressive. That's how you beat that matchup. And if you're playing the mirror match, you want to, you want to kind of want to force him to be on the aggressive, weirdly enough. Because in that case, you both are basically playing like 28 of the same cards, right? There's like two flex slots really in that deck. And that allows you to... One, answer his shit, but also set up your own combo at the same time. So it's, it's really, the mirror match for that deck is like the hardest thing to do. But when you're playing against it, be on the aggressive. Anyways, though, with that being said, I think we have time for one more because I spent a lot of times in queues. So I'm going to play one more because these games are fast anyways. And hopefully we can go for the 100% win rate in the video. All right, guys, with that being said, I'll see you guys all in the next game. All right. Another... Warlock. I need to try and dig for Angler, I think. Like, both these are really, really good. But this gives me two draws out of, one, out of two draw. There's something to play on, too, that's not hero power. There's a lot of shit in my deck to play on, too. I think it's just small bad. I'll keep this. Because in case the, the, the card I do draw is Angler, I do really want this. Okay, this is huge, but it's not really a two drop. Is the problem? It's really not a two drop now. He's playing like an ant. He's either playing anti control or anti combo, or he's playing arena lock. In both of these situations, I hate my draw. The fact that I'm the aggro deck and I had to hero power on two and not play minion is really fucking bad, by the way. I just need to hit value. Um, Amalgam is huge. Fuck, I feel like Amalgam's the only real draw in my deck, isn't that's really, really problematic? Um what, would, what else would I be happy with? Amalgam, I'd be happy with. I guess I'd be fine with Clownfish, actually. Clownfish would be okay. Uh Underbelly Angler was the other one. That's like Underbelly Angler's huge, right? Because if I play this and I hit another Toxfin, I can give something poisonous, punch him, and I still have a uh, Firemancer Flurg combo. And the other thing that, like, that's also really important, right? I want him to make him think like I don't have the Flurg. Right now, seeing me hold four cards makes him think, all right, he 100% has a board wipe in his hand. Like, there's no doubt in his mind right now, I think that I have a board wipe in hand. So, or a way to deal with a big board of taunts and whatnot. It does seem like he is AFK, which does favor us. Okay, that's fine. So, now we play this, right? Because... Waiting off and holding off on this also kind of tells him like, okay, was he have a board wipe or was he just holding shit 
hoping for an underbelly draw, in which case, you know, uh, that was correct, right? Well, it's kind of, oh, actually playing, oh, playing the 1-1 one -one here is really fucking bad. Thank God, no punish. Don't have coin to file. Oh, okay. I have to go for this here. The reason I have to go for this and not do a different play that I would have preferred is I misplayed hugely playing this. Playing this gave him access to defile to just have a board wipe. Now I'm forcing him. Oh, that's really bad. Hit this into this. How is it that I've lost out on every fucking hysteria ever? Come the fuck on, man. That was so bad. The fact that I low rolled there quite literally means I lost out on like four damage. To be fair, the fact he also had Hysteria was really, really lucky for him, seeing that he is playing Reno. Um, typically that deck, like you're holding like bombs and whatnot, but with a board full of four health minions, it was like really, really unfortunate. Uh, that's really bad for me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I lost this game. She like that's coin dark bomb on this. So the fact he actually had the hysteria and the demonic, like his draw has been filthy so far this game. Okay, I have to go for a huge board. Like I have to like overextend arguably right now. Uh just so I have like actual things on board. I miscounted my man. Uh, fuck me. Can I hit the good one yet? Oh, I did. I still just died at a file, though. That's the problem. That's why I wanted to slam this, because, again, I wanted to take my shit out of the file, but I miscounted my mana. I thought I had one more mana. The file me. If he doesn't have the file, he's been digging for it harsh. Like, he's forced to tap here to, to try and find the file. Unless he has Reno. Uh, to be fair, if he, has, if he had the file, it would have been snap play, right? It's really easy to see, like, okay, one, two, three. You just look here, you see it. And yeah, so this is telling me he doesn't have the file. It's also telling me that he should know that this is another buff uh, spell in hand. To be for the turn two, no answer to the file should have meant like, okay, I know he doesn't have the file. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I'm just going to go face. Like, I can't afford to not go face here. It's not lethal, but he's played Reno now. I couldn't afford not to. I guess like Zola is a thing. Um, also, importantly enough, dropping him down, I think he's at eight. He's at five. He could no longer go Murloc that makes my things cost health into Gigafin, right? To eat my board. Okay, well. If that's a defile, he hugely misplayed, but. Um. I just need to find five damage is the big thing. I basically turned off his hero power until he can find healing. Like old eye is lethal. To be fair, he needs the file here exactly. That's so one, two, three, four. This is at one in that case. I mean, I lose to the file. I have to accept the fact I just lose to the file and then just. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, he was digging for the file. He missed on it. It's really fucking good for me. Yeah, that was that was terrifying at the end there. Like, I felt like I had to. If I'm being honest, I think my play was correct to just say fuck it, ignore the Reno. As much as my instinct is telling me like, okay, I have a value trade against Reno, I have sh I should take it. He has no way to get it, and if I would have value traded the six damage into the Reno, it could have just been Gigafin. He's at three health, and all of a sudden he's a four seven taunt I have to get through, and I can't really kill his guy unless I hit this. Whoops. Uh, unless I hit this guy. I meant to right click, but I left click and I don't know the name of this guy, right? So unless I hit both of these guys somehow in one draw, so like it would have been Gorlock into it, but I didn't have eight mana. I guess I would have had eight mana to go Gorlock into Clownfish into double of them to fill up my board again. But even then, I'm pretty sure I would have just still just lost. So yeah, I think, I think all the plays I did there were correct against that Reno Lock player. Anyways though, uh, with all that being said, Murloc Shaman felt really fucking good. MVP is this motherfucker. This card has been insane since it came out. 
and I think like I don't know what changed like what did they get in the new set to make this deck viable again I guess clownfish clownfish was the big one but yeah like it felt really strong actually probably second or third best aggro deck I would say I'd say that this is just underneath uh pirate rogue just a little bit more unknown and not really played if you guys are looking for a new aggro deck and you guys really really enjoyed pirate rogue would highly recommend it's a little bit more glass canny um but it's still really fucking good anyways though with all that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did don't forget to, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as always follow me on twitch and twitter have a great rest of your day and i'll see you guys all in the next one where hopefully we can get some more wins with things that are not necessarily murlocs all right guys yeah i'll see you guys all in the next one peace